eating with the kids at Chinatown Complex. What? Ayo. <laughs> Okay, good morning. Nearly lunch time, huh? Okay, hi, you're watching Greg's We Eat. And it's Wednesday about 11 a.m. or so. And I'm here in the heart of town at Coleman Street to talk about the food at the buffet from the hotel behind me, which is this one here. Okay. The Peninsula Excelsior Hotel. You see, the hotel's eatery, the Coleman Cafe, underwent a renovation. And when it reopened, I think earlier this year or so, it swiftly introduced a Nasi Padang buffet in February 2023. La. And it's available seven days a week. And if you know anything about food in Singapore, you'll know that a Nasi Padang done buffet style is almost unheard of. I mean, I've been doing food journalism for close to 10 years and I have encountered maybe two or three Nasi Padang buffets in my time. And it's usually only for a limited period, la. like for Ramadan or Hari Raya, that sort of thing. Now, you might be wondering, why are there so few Nasi Padang buffets in Singapore? And to be honest, I don't know. Maybe because people expect Western food and not local food when it comes to buffets? I don't know. That's just a wild guess. Anyway, this is also the first time that I've heard of a Nasi Padang buffet in a hotel setting. So how I came to know about this buffet is because I was invited for a media tasting to try the food. Normally, I don't go to media invites. I get invited, but I tend to just decline them. Because food establishments tend to put their best foot forward for such events and so the food is usually not a true reflection of the actual quality of the food for the customer in real life. But for this case, I made an exception. Because it was a Nasi Padang buffet and Nasi Padang buffets are very rare. To be truthful, I wasn't expecting much as the standard of most hotel buffets right, are usually very average. But this time, it was pleasantly different. The quality was very good across the board, about 80% that of a good Nasi Padang restaurant. And the food is a little Indonesian in style, so the buffet is a little bit more exotic and interesting. Lah. Apparently, the hotel employs two Malaysian chefs who are solely dedicated to doing just this buffet to ensure that the quality is consistently high. And as for the prices, well, the prices are extremely reasonable. Lah. On weekdays, it's $28 plus plus for lunch and $33 plus plus for dinner. And on weekends, it is $33 plus plus for lunch and $38 plus plus for dinner. And in this day and age, these prices are almost unheard of lah, when you're talking about buffets in Singapore. So as you can tell, this hotel is very serious about being the go-to place for a great Nasi Padang buffet in Singapore. So after the media tasting, I did a social media post about the buffet and I asked if anyone would be interested in an extensive vlog about it. And many people said yes. But before I vlogged about the food, I had to obviously retest the quality lah, to see if it is holding up for the long term, lah, you know. So the plan was to go back to the buffet incognito. Unfortunately, that wasn't to be. A few weeks ago, I went down to the buffet for weekday lunch for two days to take notes and to take bureau footage using a small camera. And I was actually unnoticed for about half an hour. Lah. But then the staff recognized me as the YouTuber from a month or two ago. So the restaurant manager was alerted and he came down to say hi. And then sometime later, the president of the hotel came down to say hi. And I was treated extra special and they insisted on paying for my meal. On the second time, I went with my friends. They recognized me again, but at least we managed to pay our own way. So my plan failed. But the silver lining is that at least when I went down on both occasions, it was unannounced. So the chefs and staff didn't have time to make the food extra nice or extra special for me. Lah. And the result of the pre-vlog testing is that the food over those two days was perhaps not as well presented lah, as the media tasting. But the quality of the food was by and large just as good. So that's very reassuring. So for this vlog in particular, I will again go unannounced to triple check the quality of the food. And this time round, I'll try each and every one of the dishes and give my honest thoughts on the food as it is today right now. But with added hindsight, lah. now that I've been to this buffet three times already, this is my fourth time. So come, let's have a taste. Hello, hello. Yeah, 
Okay, sure, sure. Anyway, here, here, can. Yeah. Okay, so uh, seems about a quarter full, maybe a third full or so. It's now, let's see, eleven fifty-one. The buffet officially starts at twelve, uh, so well, and it's a weekday, so. Okay, so instead of actually getting like a whole plate of food and having the flavours mixed up, I mean, I know that that's part of the fun, but I want to try each individual dish one by one so that I can focus solely on that taste, lah, you know. So, let's get some food. Okay, first, this is the classic Singapore style uh, chicken curry. Lah, okay? So, you get the chicken pieces, the curry, potato, and of course, it comes with the best part French bread. So, let's try it. Eh? Mm. Mm. As I said, this is a very uh, Singapore style chicken curry. Lah. Reasonable oil notes, savoury with spices and with a light spiciness but not overly creamy and a slight tanginess. Lah. Gravy is nice and thick too. Some curry with the bread. Ooh. Oh god. As for the meat, okay. it's great that the meat isn't overcooked. Some of the potato. Mm. Mm. Nicely melted. Mm. Creamy, melted, very nice. Huh? And trying some of the chunky meat bits, huh? breast meat bits. Oh. Actually, reasonably moist. Huh? Next dish is gantang masak sambal ikan bilis. So it's basically potatoes with sambal, ikan bilis and peanuts inside. So I'm guessing they're trying to vary up the menu. Lah. I've been here three times, I haven't encountered this dish yet. So, potato looks fried. Oh, actually firm potato. And sambal is... Mm, savory, slightly sweet, oil rich. Peanuts and ikan bilis. Mm. Gambil is obviously softened by now, lah, but still very nice. Oh. So it's nice that the potato is actually fried, but not cooked all the way through. So it's got this um, very firm chew to it. Quite intriguing, very nice. Mm. Okay, next dish I got, they call it ayam pingit, but I think that it doesn't look like ayam pingit. This is the hijau over here, lah. So which is kind of like a green chilli sauce of sorts. And the fried chicken looks more or less the same, but still, let's try it, lah. Okay. This is another dish which I haven't encountered. Okay, seeing how crispy the chicken is. Oh. Oh. Very nice, still quite moist. Still quite crispy as well. And it's quite um, surprising. Uh, because the fried chicken in a buffet is like this, right? Because it's kept in a buffet warmer, right? It tends to soften and it tends to dry out and so on and so forth. This is reasonably uh, fresh. Uh. And so I guess it was just refilled, I guess. It's got a decent savouriness. Okay, light savouriness and with the hijau. Mm. Mm. And the hijau is amazing lah, basically. You got the onion sweetness, a bit spicy, but it's got a wonderful green chili flavour here, lah. very nice. And eaten with the chicken. Mm. Oh. Okay, the fried chicken on its own is not much flavour, but then paired with the green chilli sauce, right? Ooh, it's actually pretty awesome. Um, it's spicy, but it's not too spicy. Lah. 
kind of like a medium spiciness. Genic Sam Sayur Lode. Okay, so this is basically uh, vegetables and a coconut curry, lah, essentially. Mm, oh. Gravy um, has a nice dried prawn flavour perhaps. Gentle savouriness and a full uh, coconut creaminess. Um, spiciness is maybe light. Uh, inside I see long beans, I see carrots, I see cabbage. Vegetables still have a lot of crunch to them. It's not cooked to death. You can add rice cakes inside. Um, I got a piece of atupat. Quite fairly firm, but with the gravy, it will soften nicely. Okay, next, their beef cheek rendang. Ooh. Now, this is the dish that the Komon Cafe is extremely proud of. Oh, oh much better. And the rendang gravy is very nice and thick with a lot of rich flavours and lightly spicy levels. Um, the spices were on the lighter side but now I think that they've actually upped it back up as compared to previous times. And now it's got the oom back. Whoa. I mean the meat because it's beef cheek right, the texture is very very nicely soft. It's got a very nice meltingly soft connective tissue. Lah. And previously the rendang flavour didn't really penetrate the meat but now it does because I think that they've actually Cut it into smaller pieces instead of larger chunks. Very nice. Mm. Oh. And they throw in some raw white onions as well. Mm. Oh. Okay, I got some gado gado, and um, of course, gado gado is a must, lah, you know, especially for an Indonesian style buffet. For those of you who don't know what gado gado is, it's basically an Indonesian salad lah, of boiled and raw items in a spicy peanut sauce. As for the ingredients, what they have, they've got boiled egg, fried tau kwa, long beans, cabbage, tempeh, cucumber, fried potato. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm, the peanut sauce is nice, not overly creamy, slightly sweet, and don't detect any tanginess. Lightly spicy, very well balanced. Not as much oil notes as I would have expected. My one complaint is that maybe the tempeh is nicely fried but could be a bit crunchier. That's how I like my tempeh. Lah. Tau kwa is okay. nice and fried and soft. Again, all the vegetables have their crunch. Lah. Next we have here is the udang masak lemak. This is basically a light curry of prawns lah, you know, in coconut milk. Mm, oh. Nice creaminess. Medium spiciness lah. It's definitely not light. And uh, there's some pineapple, but you don't actually taste the pineapple in the gravy. Tasting the prawns ah. Oh, it comes with shell and all lah, so you gotta feed it yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's slightly frozen prawns. I doubt a buffet of this scale is gonna use fresh prawns lah. But it's very nicely thawed. You know, you don't taste any powdery uh, texture or anything like that. I mean, this dish is not a hard dish to do. Lah. But it's nice that prawns are reasonably fresh and it's medium-sized prawns and they give you pineapple chunks and it's quite chunky, very nice. Okay, next we got the ikan asam pedas. Lah. One of the few dishes over here which is as a mainstay. Lah. They won't change it, they will always offer it. Mm. Oh. Very nicely poached through, not overcooked. And the gravy is... Hmm, yeah, okay. And the gravy is how it comes in most good nasi padang places. Lah. You know, it's moderately spicy, with a big savouriness, some fish flavour, and not much of that sour asam flavour. Lah. You know, that's quite common. You can't really taste the inherent fish flavour, but that's mainly because the gravy is actually quite bold. Lah. And there's like ladies' fingers, onions, and tomatoes. And then you get a kupok corner where you get basically get crackers lah. You know, you get the colourful Indonesian crackers like these. And then you have the fish kupok and some belinjau. And these are actually incredibly hard to find. Mm. Oh. Okay, belinjau are fried crackers made from the seeds of the belinjau tree. And they are almost impossible to find lah in a buffet setting. 
and they come plain with a bit of oil richness mm -hmm. and that signature bitter, slightly undertoned sweetness flavour lah, you know I mean? and Then you get the fish kropok mm -hmm. Nicely crispy and oil rich There is fish flavour but it's not the good ones are where it is like seriously intense, you know I mean? This, it's not like the Tringano fish kropok lah Those are seriously intense you get the um, these colourful crackers and these are prawn crackers lah, basically Okay It's very easy for them to come soft in terms of texture but they're okay today oh. So they also serve a variety of achas and what I call like clean vegetable dishes lah. You know, and they vary from day to day uh, Sometimes it'll be acha nanas where it is um, pineapple based Sometimes it would be like karabu tauge or like a salad kubis or something like that. Lah. What they will always have is this acha, which is kind of like the nonia acha over here, which is the acha which most people are familiar with. Mm. Mm. So, this is your standard nonia style pickled vegetables that you get slightly sweet, very slightly sour, savory, slightly spicy. Mm, I see pineapples, carrots, cucumbers. And the vegetables have a nice crunch to them and what's nice is that they actually sprinkle on a nice amount of ground peanuts on top lah. then today they have got kind of like um, acha papaya lah. Hmm? Yeah. very fresh, very green it got like a fresh sourness to it this is to cleanse the palate and then lastly they have uh, something new today which is known as the well they call it ulam ulam lah. and that is basically kind of like raw vegetables and you actually dip it into a gravy la, of sorts. The gravy has got tomato, mm, blachan, highly pungent. I mean, pungent in a nice way. You have the cabbage. Mm. Mm. The sauce is, it's got a big complex savouriness, big earthiness because of the blachan, obviously. Very, very slight fresh tomato and chilli flavour. Then they also have tomatoes as well. Mm. Yeah, then to also show you that they also do two kinds of rice. They have the plain rice and they have the nasi kuning. This one right over here. Number one is nasi kuning. Okay, this is basically rice that is cooked with some coconut milk and spices. And... Mm. You can taste some richness. And the rice is firm. Last time, they didn't make it so spice heavy, but now they made it a bit more spice heavy, which is fantastic. Next, I got some beef bakso. This one over here, a bit hard to see. Bakso is basically Indonesian meatball soup. Lah. You know, and here, they use beef balls. They basically have a soup section where they rotate the items, lah, basically. So, sometimes it's soup kambing, sometimes they have soup buntot, and sometimes they have beef bakso. The soup buntot is much, much, much better. The bakso wasn't that great. But let's try it today. Oh, better today. I'll give you some fried onions on top, some coriander. You can taste the spices, and it's not so overly flavored. It's more gentle. There's a little bit more of like a stock flavor to it. Uh, but here is where it fails. The actual bakso itself. They take um, factory supply lah. I mean. I mean, in a large scale operation, it's hard not to. But let's see how it tastes like. Yeah, not great. Maybe it's a bit too flared up. The texture is very soft. Not great. Nah. That's it, right? The soup was better than the last time I had it. But the beef balls are so so. Anyway, I will skip this. Okay, next is the misoto, and I haven't eaten this before. So, this is my first time. Mi Soto is kind of like an Indonesian um, chicken broth of sorts like, in a way and they eat it with um, yellow noodles and sometimes they put in chicken, um, coriander, fried onions yeah so. oh nicely done quite big robust flavours there's some soy chilli on the side if you want to up the flavour yellow noodles and there's some tauge Bee sprouts. There's quite a lot more spices in here. Very nice. From the first time I've come here until now, right, they've actually slowly increased the spices, like realizing that the crowd 
actually prefers a more spice heavy um, approach, uh, which is good. So the noodle section, they actually rotate between three types. Uh. There's the mee siam, um, there's the mee both of which I've tasted. The mee soto is the only one which I haven't tasted, but it's very nicely done here. Now for dessert. Now for some dessert, and they have two mainstays. La. They have the chendol and the ice kacang. Uh, for me, the big attraction is the chendol itself. So this is more the Indonesian style, la, where there's no red bean paste or anything like that. Okay? This is just the ice, the coconut cream, the chendol strips, and the gula melaka. La. Mm. Oh. They have all the elements right. La. Okay, the chendol strips itself are okay. The texture could be a bit softer. They are a bit on the firm side, but still okay. But the good thing is that the coconut cream is very, very thick. And the gula melaka, they actually diluted it a little bit today. But I think that's good, because then it actually blends well with the coconut cream. Okay, the restaurant normally serves one hot dessert. And what they offer today is the pulu hitam. It's kind of like a glutinous mm -hmm. rice, black glutinous rice dessert in a way. And then it's really just um, black glutinous rice with water and sugar. Really, that's it. And then um, they put some coconut milk and they mix it. And then it becomes like this. Lah. Very simple but also delicious. Mm. But the pulo dum is very, very nice. Lah. Very, very warm. All the glutinous rice has broken down. And the coconut cream, very, very thick, obviously. Okay, and finally the ice kacang. I mean, um, ice kacang is very, very popular throughout Malaysia and Singapore. And here it looks like you have everything you need to do ice kacang lah. You have the ice, obviously, the green and uh, pink jellies, and the chin chow, and you have the atap chi, which is a kind of a fruit, and the cream corn. You have the red and green sweet sauces, and then you have the evaporated milk lah. Ice kacang kangorong. This is what I grew up as a kid eating. I mean. Okay, so finished. So that was a look at the Nasi Padang Buffet at the Komon Cafe. And a couple of points before I end. Lah. Apparently, the kitchen doesn't rely on pre-packaged sauces. And all the sambal and sauces are made from scratch. And that partially explains why the food tastes quite homey. Lah. I mean, another possible explanation is that the hotel is owned by YTC Hotels. Lah. And YTC Hotels are owned by an Indonesian Chinese family. So that probably explains why they are quite particular about their Nasi Padang standard. Point number two, and this is um, especially for Muslim viewers, is that the food is not halal. And there is no halal cert, but all the ingredients are from halal suppliers. Lah. Lastly, um, Many of the dishes are on rotation, so you won't get to sample everything on one visit. But there are certain mainstays. Lah. And that is the beef cheek rendang, the ikan asam pedas, the chicken curry, the chendol and the ice kacang. Those are the mainstays. Lah. Oh, the gado gado is also on permanent fixture here. But I'll just briefly show you what I ate on the other days. Lah, okay? I had some deep fried tahu telo, and then there was some achan nanas, which is pickle or just pineapple. Lah. 
and there was a cold salad, which was something like salad kubis lah, kerabu tauge as well, and acha manis, mm. the ayam panggang hijau, the mee siam, soup buntut, fried chicken ayam goreng, your basic fried chicken lah with salt and turmeric, mee rebus, brinjal masak belado, brinjal ikan bilis and peanuts, and a sambal. The sambal telur, boiled eggs which are deep fried and then quickly stirred with sambal. Sambal prawns, prawns with sambal. As for the desserts, kolak campur sani, bobo cha cha. Uh, it's kind of like a creamy and sweet Malaysian dessert lah, with yam, taro and coconut milk. So would I travel half across Singapore to eat here? A big yes. Firstly, it is so hard to find nasi padang as a buffet. And especially harder to find one which is very well done across the board lah about 90% well done. I would say it's about 80% the quality of a top nasi padang restaurant. Uh. Maybe aging towards 90%. Uh. You know, and that is saying something. Um, I mean, during my first few visits, I had the criticism that they actually toned down the spices uh, and spiciness to suit a more non-Malay crowd. Uh. You know, but I think that they've actually tweaked it up to actually add more spices and spiciness. So that's a good thing for me, because I like that sort of thing, but maybe not for somebody who is not used to chili. So, you know, you can't win them all, basically. So thanks for watching another episode of Great Speed Eats, where I eat through the whole of Singapore. If you like this episode, give it a like, subscribe, and comment below, and turn on the notifications bell. And I'll see you in the next one, for much more eating. Bye. Oh, just FYI, they have some fruits over here, but as you can tell, it's a bit pathetic. Lah. So I didn't bother to take any. They also have got some kwe kwe right over here. But I've tried them and they are not fantastic. So I didn't bother to highlight them. So.